We are, gentlemen, still in chapter 7. This chapter is just packed. Oh my goodness, can you feel the intensity in this room? One thing I really do like about the way the movie versions stage this scene is that all the characters, or all the actors, are very clearly hot. Like, it is sweaty, uncomfortable, dripping sweat, heat. Okay, so that I think the movies do well. In any case, all right, we're having the Tom and Jay are having this big argument over Daisy. Jordan and I would like to get the hell out of there. Jordan and Nick, excuse me, would like to get the heck out of there because they don't really need to be part of this. But notice both Tom and Jay want them to stay, and they're acting. This is such a funny thing, as if it would be a privilege to partake vicariously of their emotions. Notice what Nick's saying there, right? It, it's as if, hey, you poor people, Nick and Jordan, don't you want to see what, what rich people are like? It, wouldn't it be cool for you um, to get to see us talk and act? Oh, wow. Okay. Such a presumption on the part of the uber wealthy, right? That the poor have nothing better to do than just watch the rich live their lives. Okay. All right. Tom now is asking from Daisy, I want to hear about it. Okay. And now Jay jumps in though and says, I told you what's been going on. Going on for five years and you didn't know. And Tom says, you've been seeing this fellow for five years? No, no, no. Jay says, not seen. We couldn't meet. But we loved each other all the time. And you didn't know. I used to laugh sometimes, but there was no laughter in his eyes to think that you didn't know. I wish this PDF version hadn't improperly punctuated this. Gatsby saying, I used to laugh to think that you didn't know. But there was no laughter in Gatsby's eyes. Okay? So. All right. Okay, now Tom rejects all that, of course. He says, Daisy loved me when she married me, and she loves me now. And Gatsby rejects that, says no. Look at, look at Tom's paternalism here. Daisy does love him, she says. The trouble is, sometimes she gets foolish ideas in her head, and she doesn't know what she's doing, he nodded sage, sagely. And what's more, I love Daisy, too. Once in a while, I go off on a spree and make a fool of myself, but I always come back, and in my heart, I love her all the time. That's a nice way to try, try to explain all his infidelity. But notice, he's really belittling Daisy here, right? Remember what Daisy said in chapter one? That the only good thing for a girl to be is a pretty little fool, right? Well, this is why. She's being treated like just a pretty little fool. Oh, the fool, she has a little idea in her head. We'll wait until it gets out of her head, until a man talks some sense into her. Okay? All right, but now Daisy responds to that line from Tom and says, you're revolting. Okay? And she turns to Nick and says, do you know why we left Chicago? I'm surprised that they didn't treat you to the story of that little spree. Okay, so something about Tom's behavior in Chicago was offensive enough or disgraceful or shameful enough that they had to leave to kind of get away from the rumors or whatever, the truth. Okay. All right. And now uh, Gatsby is trying to get her to move away from that past. And he says, that's all over now. It doesn't matter anymore. Tell him the truth, that you never loved him, and it's all wiped out forever. Guys, again, this is why Jay's dream is impossible. You can't wipe it out. Remember the line from a chapter ago. You can't repeat the past. What do you mean you can't? Of course you can, right? Jay really thinks here that if you can just... If, if Daisy will just reject the love she had for Tom, that it's like it never happened. Okay? So, she has it, but Daisy can't do it. She hesitated. Her eyes fell on Jordan and me with a sort of appeal, as though she realized at last what she was doing, as though she had never 
all along intended doing, doing anything at all. But it was done now. It was too late. It's almost like, I mean, you know, I don't mean to say only Tom is paternalistic towards Daisy. Look at what Jay is asking her to do, right? He's asking her to, de de to deny her own feelings in marriage in order to please him. Okay? And she tries to say, I never loved him. But it was with perceptible reluctance. Okay? And now they, now Tom really tries to get into some tenderness there, right? Not even on our honeymoon when they were in uh, Greece, Capiolani. Um, not even when I carried you. And then look. Look at what Daisy says here. Please don't. She says to Tom, her voice was cold, but the rancor was gone from it. She looked at Gatsby. There, Jay, she said. But her hand, as she tried to light a cigarette, was trembling. She suddenly threw the cigarette and the burning match on the carpet. Poor Daisy. She's so emotional, she can't even light a cigarette. Oh, you want too much, she cried to Gatsby. I love you now. Isn't that enough? I can't help what's past. That's actually pretty honest, right? I got to give Daisy some credit here. I think she has correctly assessed the situation. Gatsby wants too much. She loves him now. Isn't that enough? She can't help what's past. That's all true, right? She can't help what's past. It should be enough, Jay, that she loves you now. It should be, but it's not. And look at the helpless sob leads to this final line. I did love him once, but I loved you too. And that's where Gatsby just, it just totally destroys his dream and idea. You loved me too, right? Wait, wait. How could you love him and love me, right? I mean, it just doesn't fit with the dream, okay? Tom is able to share what married couples share, right? He says, look, there's things that have happened with Daisy and I that nobody will ever know, and nobody will ever, and we will never forget, okay? All right. And then Jay says, I want to talk to Daisy alone. She's all excited. But Daisy finally concludes here. Even if I were alone, Jay, I can't say I never loved Tom, she admitted in a pitiful voice. It wouldn't be true. Wow. She's not willing to lie. She's not willing to lie. Now Tom says, of course it wouldn't be true. He agrees, and she turns to him and says, as if that mattered to you. Okay? Wow. I mean, Daisy did love Tom. It sounds like, but she never felt like, felt like Tom loved her back, I think is something we can say here for sure, okay? All right, wow. And now Jay says, look, it's over. You're not taking care of any, her anymore, old sport. She's leaving you, right? Daisy's leaving you. Notice, Gatsby's the one who says it first, and then Daisy concurs. I am, though, with visible effort, she said, all right? Okay, all right, and now Tom reveals some of the things he's learned through his investigations of Gatsby, the uh, private investigators he's hired, and he learns that Gatsby and Wolfsheim were bootleggers. And gentlemen, I hope you have some sense that Gatsby did not make, make his money honestly. Thirty-year-old men do not buy mansions in the Hamptons after only working for three years if they are doing legal work, okay? The way you make that kind of money is by being willing to break the law, okay? Straight Playa would tell you exactly the same thing, all right? Okay, and so basically Tom knows about Gatsby's money. He knows it comes from, uh, he knows it comes from bootlegging, and he knows it comes from gambling. Okay, so, and now, Tom says that drugstore business was just small change. Continued Tom slowly. 
But you've got something on now that Walter's afraid to tell me about. So that sounds like there's some new illegal dealing cooking uh, that even Tom's informant won't tell him about. So, wow, man, this, this is an incredible moment here. Okay. All right. Now, Gatsby has, gets this expression where he looks like he's going to hit Tom or where he looks like he's actually could kill a man. All right? And now Jay try, Gatsby tries to explain to Daisy. He's saying he's defending his name. He's defending against accusations. But notice, with every word, she was drawing further and further into self, herself. So he gave that up. And only the dead dream fought on as the afternoon slipped away. The dead dream. He was trying to touch what was no longer tangible, struggling unhappily, undespairingly, toward that lost voice across the room. Okay. Wow. All right. So, now they are going to go. Please, Tom, I can't stand this anymore, Daisy yells. All right, Tom says, you guys start on home, and you drive in Mr. Gatsby's car. Keep track of that. Okay, the cars switched on the drive home. Jay and Daisy were in Tom's car on the way to New York. Now they're going to be in Gatsby's own car on the way home. Okay? All right, so we, uh, we're getting to the, uh, they're going to be leaving the room at the plaza and something occurs to Nick. He says, I just remembered that today's my birthday. So how did Nick spend his 30th birthday? He spent his 30th birthday watching a bunch of rich folks chew each other out over who should really get to sleep with whose wife. Okay. I was 30, Nick says. Before me stretched the portentous, menacing road of a new decade. Ooh, wow. Road. There's something on the road coming, guys. Okay. I had forgotten just how long this chapter is. This is going to be several, several parts of... Uh, of screencasting. Okay, I'm going to pause here because now they're leaving the plaza and they're going to drive back home. Okay? Back to the eggs.